الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمدا اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and thank Him for the opportunity and for every blessing and every bounty that He has given us. And we seek refuge in Him from all the evils within us and outside of us. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, nobody can misguide. And whomever He leads astray, nobody can guide them. And we send peace, blessing, and mercy of Allah on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his passing, his uh, companions, his family, and his progeny, inshallah, until the day, until the day of uh, judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We're thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this opportunity to live during this blessed month of Ramadan to witness this month and to take part in the prayers, in the fasting, in the worshiping, especially in this society over here. And may Allah accept everybody's fasting in Qiyam al layl and Khatam and Karaway and all the good deeds that they do, whether the kaf, whether they're helping needy, whatever. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward every single one of you with multiple times. And since we are the last part of the blessed month and it's going very fast, it's a time for our reflection. You know, at least once a year we reflect upon of ourselves. We do the accounting, we check. We look back, we see how have we lived so far? Have we been doing the right thing? Are we on the right path? Have we done all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do? And did we refrain from everything that He forbade us? So, especially if we do that during this month and make the proper correction when necessary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah will give us reward and Jannah inshallah. Yes. You know, we're very happy and sometimes even boastful and say, Oh, Alhamdulillah, I did my uh, Psalm, I did my Qiyam al Layl, I did my Khatam. We always lean on that side and we're thankful and we're happy, which is good. But have we ever thought and reflected upon some of the negative things that we have done and we continue to do in our lives? What about the other side? And nobody can claim that they have never sinned. We're all sinful, even by nature. We have been created to be daif, and we have temptation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us temptation and also gave us free will. So we have to reflect on that during these last few days of Ramadan and sit down and account and make that proper correction. I mean, we sin every single day, whether we admit to it or not. They may be small and minor, they may be major, they may be inadvertent, they may be on purpose. And they all add up to, you know, throughout our lives even if they're as, as small as a grain of sand, and we neglect that, we say, oh, that's nothing. You know, throughout our lives, how many millions of these grains of sand do we accumulate? You know, if you take a sand bag and fill it with, with a few shovels of sand, and you cannot lift it anymore. It becomes heavy. The mountains are made of these small grains of sand. They can grow really, really big. 
and it's hard to get rid of them then. Let me give you a simple, easy example, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, suppose we're sitting at home, there's a phone call, <laughs> our kid picks it up, and we figure out who that person is, and we tell our child, tell them I'm not home. We don't even think about that. It's that simple. But we lie. That's a sin. Lying a sin is a sin in, in Islam. So maybe it's a small sin, maybe we consider, oh, it's, it's just a grain of sand. But look at that, what the consequence is. Now we taught that child to lie, and it's okay to lie. Even with this one-time thing that we don't even do it once, it happens multiple times, then that child lies and learns how to lie. And look at how many multiple sins that person accumulates which we share the responsibility and accumulates back on us. And then whoever learns from that person during all their lifetime, and they start lying and see how it multiplies and multiplies throughout, and becomes, becomes a, just one small sin can become a mountain of sin for us. Well, how about we do all these backbiting and calling people by name? Look at Allah subhanahu ta'ala, what He says in the Quran and Majid. It says, Wala yakta ba'dukum ba'da. Do not do riba. Do not backbite. Do not slander. And he gives a horrific example of doing that as equating it to eating the flesh of that person who is dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes farther than that and says, and he answered his own question. He says, do you like to eat that person's flesh? And he says, obviously, you don't like that. You abhor that. But we're so used to these kind of things, we do it all the time, you know. We cheat, we do this, we lie, we do anything and everything that happens in our life, you know, we get so used to it, but we don't think of it anymore. So what do we do with all these mountains of sand? How do we expect to get to Jannah? You know, we're chained to that. Shaitan has chained us to the, into these mountains and we cannot move anymore. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so easy for us. Look at his rahmah. In spite of disobeying him and going with waswas of shaitan, he still gives us a way out. But how often do we take advantage of that? Our free pass to heaven. And it's so simple. It's so easy. But we don't do it. It comes down to only one word. It can't be simpler than that. And it's called tawba. Just repentance. It's a one word. And, we, and when we do that sincerely, wholeheartedly, and we do the tawba, which is an Arabic word, means to return. Meaning to make a U-turn. We're headed towards hellfire. That's the wrong way. Turn around. Go back to the right thing. It's that simple. When we sincerely do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and promise not to do these things anymore and be vigilant about it, He has promised to erase all our sins. Just like that, no matter how big they are. Look at his mercy. But how many times do we say tawbah during the day? We don't do that. We don't reflect on our bad deeds. If we don't, then we don't say tawbah. So my dear brothers and sisters, repentance is very, very important in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says in the Quran in Majid, which means, in turn to Allah, in repentance, all of you, that you might succeed. He says all of you. That means we are all sinners. There's no exclusion in that. Nobody can claim that, no, I don't need to do that. My dear brothers and sisters, 
when we're outside, you know, walking in the mall or somewhere, we bump into a stranger. Even though maybe it's their fault. We turn around and say, I'm sorry. Pardon me. To a human being that we have never seen, we don't know what kind of that person is, what their religion, belief, and this and that. We immediately apologize. But we don't do that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We to say, disobey him, we don't even say, I am sorry. I repent. I regret. Forgive me, Allah. So is it that hard to do tawbah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran and Majid, which says that Inna Allah yuhibbal tawabina wa yuhibbal mutakhirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the people who do tawbah and those who purify themselves of sin. He doesn't say even he likes it or commands you. He says he loves. Wouldn't it be nice to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator? What a high status would that be? Even if a person loves us, we'd be we boast about it so much. Rather than being loved by shaitan, doing the right, wrong thing, why would we not be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who can give us everything and all the rewards in this dunya and in and, and akhirah? Some people may have intention to do tawbah, but they see some obstacle in the way. We will have to strive to remove those obstacles. You know, nobody is holding us from doing tawbah. The best part in not doing guna or sins is just not to do anything. It's much harder to get up and think and, and premeditate and sit down and, and, and do that action and go harm somebody or do something wrongful. Much easier not to do anything. Just It's okay to be lazy in that case. You get sawab. Sometimes not doing something is giving you more reward than doing that thing. A lot of times we come up with excuses for why we cannot do the salah or this and that. Why don't we come up with excuses that why this is why I cannot do guna or the sin? So my dear brothers and sisters, you know, there are some reasons why we, we, we become, we have these obstacles and we're not doing tawbah. It's either that, you know, we don't think that our sins are big enough or we just like to continue to immerse ourselves in that immoral sin, whatever that is, and take just temporary pleasure from that. Or is it our iman not that strong? Or what's going on? We have to analyze that and go beyond that. The doors of Tawbah are open throughout all our lives. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. The only time that door closes is when we are on our deathbed. That we cannot harm anybody anymore. That we're, you know, helpless. And then we, if we say tawbah, that's too late. That's when, you know, we go forward and run. And once we fall off the cliff and we're on a free fall, then we cannot say, oh, I made a mistake and I want to go back around. It's too late then. And we never know when that moment is for us that we have, when we are dying. So let's do our tawbah while we can. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that. And the other time when tawbah is not accepted, when we see the sign of qiyamah, and, and we know that the world is ending, and then we, we say tawbah at that time. Other than that, you know, the doors of tawbah, they are open all the time. 
especially during these nights, that the last one is seeking people during the night. Say, who wants you to do Tawbah? Who wants my mercy? I'm here. Just stay there. And we don't take advantage of that. So let me say a few reasons what keep us from repenting, from doing Tawbah. Sometimes we take our sins lightly. We get so used to it. Now that's nothing. Oh, I named that person, I did this and that. So, but these little things, even if we consider them little, like I say, they accumulate it during our time, in our life. Even if there are small specks of dust, you know, when they keep on accumulating, you see your house after a few days, you don't dust it, look at that table, how much dust is accumulated. <coughs> they become heavier and heavier on our shoulder. And we have to wash ourselves clean. So let's not think of our sins lightly, because they are not light. It's disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we disobey Him, it's not a light thing. The other reason that we may not be doing tawbah, and some people say, what's the point? I will do it again. I know it happens again. Well, that's the problem, and we shouldn't fall into that trap. Number one, if we have strong iman and strong belief and we made a commitment that I'm not going to do that again, we shouldn't do it. 